Okay, let's start with finding an image. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can find a picture of a bicycle. We're going to go to images. We're going to go to, this is where you want to go to your tools, right? We want first usage rights. You need Creative Commons license. You can't pick something that has copyright. Then we want something that is just black and white. Once we get that, we want to go to type and we want to go to either clip art or line drawing. Clip art tends to work pretty well uh, as what we might want is a solid as opposed to uh, something that has more detail. This would not work as well. This would not work as well because it has uh, a gradient in the wheel and the gray as well as the black. This would not work as well. Again, it would trace both sides of that line when we put it in the um, in Illustrator for tracing. So you want something that's gonna be fairly uh, simple um, and with enough substance. So this one would give us enough width to push pull, right? In our, uh, once we bring it into Fusion, this one would be really skinny, right? And this would print, be more difficult to print. So as we're looking at options, you might pick something that is a little more substantial. I'm gonna go with this one for now. And we notice this is on, always note where you're getting it, Wikimedia Commons. So I know it's gonna be Creative Commons licensed. You can see how this is the size of the image, but that's not the image of this, the size of this image. You have to actually click into it to go to the image that is that size. Then you can download, you can see it has lots of different options for how big. Um, if you want a nice smooth edge, don't pick the tiniest one, go with something that's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to snag this one. There we go. And then I can control click on this and save the image. All right, very easy. And it, this tells me exactly what it is. And I'm going to save that to my desktop. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go into Illustrator. Um, you could also uh, draw with, uh, draw your picture if you wanted a hand drawn and color it in black and white. So it's again, solid. So it's really easy to trace. And as you see that solid black, you see the object that will then be extruded in uh, Fusion 360. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a new file and it doesn't have to be very big, okay? Um, you could just pick an A4, you could pick whatever. Uh, I'm gonna pick something about that big. And then you have to place your graphic into that. You can't just open the, the um, graphic file that you just downloaded, okay? So I'm going to go File, Place, and as that comes up for my options, I'm gonna go grab my bike. You can see that it has the PNG at the end, it's a ping file. Now, I have this, I can click and drag this as big as the, I don't know exactly how, yeah, big enough, on this. And you can see as I zoom in, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of an edge, but that's not bad, right? If you zoom in that much and you see substantial uh, jaggedy pixels, maybe pick something that's a little bit larger. Okay. So I have this. Now I'm going to hit return. Oops, no, I'm not. Um, I'm going to go to objects and I'm going to rasterize this image. So this is step one that you must take. It embeds the pixels into the file and white transparent is fine. So we do that. Okay, so now it's a picture. Now, if I, let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, Remember that when it does that, see there's the white background there, that again, it's hard to see when it's on the uh, white background of your file. Uh, next, I am going to image trace, make and expand. So again, it's under object, image trace, make and expand. And yes, fine. And what that's going to do is trace each of the white parts and the black parts. So there's a separate um, vector for each of those. And to see, like, I definitely don't need the white parts, right? So I'm going to make sure I'm on my direct selection tool and I'm gonna click on the white and I'm gonna get rid of it. And I'm gonna click on this white and get rid of it and this white and get rid of it and this white and get rid of it and this white and get rid of it. Now, I have currently my bicycle, dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -da, and it is, as you can see over here, a black fill with no stroke. 
If I flip-flop these, I now have the outline that I can bring into Fusion 360. Terribly convenient. So all I need to do now is save, and I'm going to save as uh, bicycle number one. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to save as an SVG file. Okay, not compressed, not anything fancy, just there. And all of this is fine. I'm going to go, okay, thank you very much. Great. Now, I'm going to quit that, and I'm going to go open Fusion. And I'm going to bring the SVG file in and place it uh, in a document, or in a file. Uh, and I'm going to place it on a plane. And you want to ask yourself, do I want to, uh, when I'm adding three-dimensionality to this, do I want to pull up so it's making it taller? Or do I want to put it on a vertical surface and pull it out so the bike is standing up? I personally would like my bike standing up right now. So once this opens and updates and takes forever. Dum -dum -dum -dum. Okay, so you have some options. I'm just going to pull up this um, from the other day because it gives me some things to work with, right? So my first option, you can see how this is the one I pulled in last time as a graphic, right? And I pulled up from the, from the flat plane. Well, let's say I want to, I'm going to insert an SVG file. It wants me to go find said SVG file. There's my SVG file. Great. Now, I have to pick a plane to put it on. I can pick one of my origin planes. That would work. I could pick, um, I could pick a plane that's, that's parallel to an object I already have. Right? I could do that. So let's say I wanted it to line up evenly with the front of this. Oops. So many palettes everywhere. There we go. Let's say I want it to line up with this, but I don't necessarily want it attached, right? I don't need it right on the front. So I'm just gonna put it over here. Um, I'm gonna move this way a little bit. And I'm gonna Im insert my file. Now, there is my, um, there is my bicycle, right? And with the bicycle, ah, I put the pallet over the controls. This, this is the controls that goes with your imported SVG, right? Now, this is great. You can see this is a lot larger than the things I was building before, right? So I can, I can grab this little half round thing that's in the middle here, and I can make this smaller so that it is more in scale with the rest of my uh, things. You can see how tall this is over here, right? Um, perhaps I want this to be uh, 12 millimeters from y distance, maybe I want my y distance to be, huh. All right, if you actually wanted this on the, let's say for example, we wanted it right on that origin, this on the same plane, this red line, right? Your um, x axis, you could do that. So this is somewhere in the ballpark. Um, once you're, oh, you can also, if you wanted it like turned or something, that's what this is for, right? So you can do that. You can, you can flip it left, right. Let's say I wanted it headed in that direction instead. I could flip it. If it's upside down, I could flip it right side up. Those are all your controls for this. Once you have this the way you want it, okay, then say, okay. It's easier to do all those fixes then. Now, you'll notice with this sketch, much like the original trace that gave us the white parts, right? We don't, again, we don't need those. So we're just gonna select the part that is the black part and not these. And these will become just the voids, right? So once we have that selected, oh wait, we can finish sketch, sorry. We're gonna get, then we're gonna select it. Then we can modify and press pull or we can create and extrude, they're both the same. And then you can decide how thick you would like this to be, right? So I'm going to do, this and I'm going to say, all right, let's say we want to have it be, I don't know, maybe five millimeters, 
really not that big, just kind of there and not too thick and happy campers. Oops, why am I looking at it upside down? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. Um, you could also, let's say we wanted that um, 12 millimeters and we wanted a taper angle so that it's getting um, smaller on one side. Will it let me do that? No. Oh, because of the holes and everything. It doesn't want to let me do that. Let me do 10. No, I don't want to do that either. Or let me make it bigger. No, never mind. Okay, if it's a simpler shape, you can taper it so that it like gets bigger or smaller at the backside when you extrude it. Make sure it's a new body, we say okay, and then all of a sudden you have your three-dimensional object that you can play with as part of your chess piece, right? Um, I think that's all you need for that. Uh, after you have it, this you can treat this just like um, any other three-dimensional object that you have on your screen in Fusion, right? So enjoy, and I look forward to seeing what you make.